From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Dollar, my name's King, Malibu Sheriff Station. Did you leave a message here? Oh, yes, sir. I understand you're looking for Lorraine Broderick. Broderick or Bradley, whatever name she's using. We want her. I'm looking for her, too. Well, what's your connection? I'm an insurance investigator. We've been trying to find her all the way from Hartford. We have to pay off a claim that's due her. Claim? Yeah, that's right. An old man left her $1,500. Uh, she doesn't deserve it, not that one. I can't tell him that. He's dead. I'm expecting a little action on it pretty quick. Like to be in on it. Come on over. <laughs> Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. Location, Malibu Beach, California. To the Eastern Trust Insurance Company Claims Division, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Broderick matter. More expenses, item 15, $38 even, more transportation. My trip here to Malibu Beach, where I didn't even bother listening to another disgruntled hotel proprietor repeat a bad check story I knew only too well. I went directly to the sheriff's station and Deputy King. Well, that's about the picture, Mr. Dollar. Lorraine Bradley was at the end four days and checked out this morning. Use the name Bradley. Lorraine Bradley. She can't be too far ahead of you now. I hope not. This has been a long, rough chase. While she was at the inn, she took up with one of our local residents, a man named Joe Tappan, who lives over in the beach colony. We know this much. He drove her into town this morning when she checked out of the inn. Have you talked to this man Tappan yet? He hasn't come back yet. When did she leave the inn? Oh, about ten this morning. Uh Uh-huh. After two now. Uh, It gives him just about time. He has a house over in the colony. We've got a man there. Colony? Uh, Down the road a piece. They call it that because a lot of movie stars built beach homes there 25 or 30 years ago. Movie colony, right in the beach. Oh, this Tappan, is he an actor? Yeah, when he gets work, which isn't very often. Mainly, he keeps suntan. Excuse me. Sure. Yeah, this king. Oh, good, right away. Tappan just drove up to his house. Let's go. I went with Deputy King to talk with Joe Tappan. He turned out to be a healthy, muscular man in his mid-thirties. By the time we got there, he was in trunks and sunglasses, sitting on a porch at the front of his house. He was a little stunned by the news we brought him. What? The rain of phony. Are you sure about this, Sheriff? That's the man at the seaside inn. Oh, no. No, I don't believe it. Is this Lorraine? Go ahead, look at it. Well, that... Looks like Lorraine. Yes, but I can't be sure. She's older. But I mean, the girl in this picture's pretty young. It's her, all right. Mr. Dollar's been looking all over the country for her. Hartford, New York City, up and down this coast. Well, come on. Let's go up to the house. I thought I knew her pretty well. How long did you know her, Mr. Tappan? Well, not long, but I knew her. I really did. When did you meet her? The first night she checked into the seaside inn. Four days, then. Yeah. Uh, want something to drink? No. No, thanks. Well, I think I'll have... No, 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 I, I don't want to talk about her. Well, you have to talk about her, Mr. Tappan. But I'm sure there's some explanation of, about the check. She'd have to explain quite a few checks. Right, Dollar? Yeah, that's about it. Mr. Tappan, I understand you drove her into Los Angeles this morning. Uh, that's right. I took her to the Beverly Glen Hotel. Did she check in there? No, she just dumped her luggage. She told me she didn't know whether or not she'd have to go to Chicago tonight. Something about a house she owned there that had to be rented or sold. Uh Uh-huh. Did you leave her there at the Beverly Glen? Uh, No. She made a phone call and said she had to meet her lawyer. Did she say where? A bar in Hollywood. Uh, The Topper, I think it was, on Coinga Boulevard. I drove her over there and left her. When was this? A couple of hours ago, I guess. About noon. How was she dressed? Black, strapless... Wore a fur stole. Did she mention any names, tell you anything about herself? Oh, yes. She told me that six months ago, her little boy was killed in an automobile accident. He was only two years old. She said that was the thing that broke up her marriage to this Bradley. Uh Uh-huh. And she told me that she needed to believe in something again. Uh, Someone. And that she needed someone to believe in her. 
Well, there wasn't any little boy or any husband, Mr. Tappan. There have been a couple of men I've talked to, a dentist in Hartford, a businessman in New York, who felt the same way as you do about her. Well, even with what you told me, I believe what she said. Why, why she cried a little when she was telling me. Oh, I, I don't care how you look at me. I, I don't think that anyone could invent a story that tragic without some sort of basis. A good liar can see a story in a newspaper like that one and adapt it for his own needs. But I am an actor, sir, and I can tell when other people are acting. She wasn't. She... She... Well, go on, Mr. Tappan. Look, I've got a suggestion for you. Uh, what's your name? Dollar. I've got a suggestion for you. Try believing what people tell you sometime. It'll do something for that habit you have of bearing down with your eyes. Okay, the next time I have two weeks off. What? See you, Mr. Tappan. I drove into Hollywood with Deputy King. At the Beverly Glen Hotel, a worried clerk was still wondering what to do with the 14 pieces of luggage Lorraine Broderick had deposited there earlier. No, she was not registered at the hotel. No, she hadn't phoned in and given him any instructions. Deputy King made arrangements for a man to cover the lobby in case she showed up to claim her things, and we went into the topper. What will it be, gentlemen? Police. I'd like to talk to the man who was on duty here at noon today. Oh, that's me, sir. Is there anything wrong? Now, this is Mr. Dollar. We're trying to locate a woman who's been using the name Lorraine Bradley. We were told she was in here around noon today. Nope, I don't recognize that name, sir. About 5'5", five, five, dark brown hair, brown eyes, 24 years old, wore a black strapless summer dress and a stole. Yeah, it's a uh, 24... No, no, nobody liked that in all day. No, sir, noon is a pretty slow time, sir. I'd have noticed if anybody like that came in, I think. Have you been on duty all that time? I came on at 10. That's when we opened. Are you sure this is the right place, the topper? Now, this is the place. Well, I wish I could help you, sir, but I'm sorry. Excuse me, will you? Yes, sir, will you? Well, we struck out. One thing. What's that? That luggage at the Beverly Glen. Yeah. We'll keep an eye on it. Lorraine Broderick did not return to the Beverly Glen Hotel that day to claim her luggage. The lobby was watched around the clock. Her description was on the Daily Bullet, and every policeman in Los Angeles was on the lookout for her. I spent my time thinking about the little girl who had helped an old man sell newspapers one afternoon years ago. A little girl with a face like an angel. I didn't feel good about this case. But Joe Tappan felt worse when I went to see him again. Well. Hi. Mind if I come in? What now, Mr. Dollar? Your girlfriend. What about her? I've been thinking about what you told us. So? So maybe you didn't understand what I told you. <laughs> now, look I'm here. not pushing my weight around, Tappan. But it seems to me you're a little stubborn in what you want to believe about her. How old did she tell you her baby was that she lost in a car accident? Two years old. All right. Two years ago, she was working for a dentist in Hartford, Connecticut. He was pretty much in love with her. She left him flat to take up with a man in the brokerage business in New York. She left him flat. Took $6,500 when she did it. There wasn't any baby in her life then. Her name was Lorraine Broderick. It still is. Now, would you like to see my file on her? I brought it along. No, thanks. I thought I'd better prove that part was a lie. So you proved it. Mind if I sit down? Help yourself. Thanks. Do you have anything else to tell me? I suppose I do, Mr. Tappan, since you don't seem to want to tell me anything. Now, just sit down, please. I've heard every man who knew her describe her. And I think I can understand why they feel the way they do. All I've got is a picture from a high school annual taken when she was 17. That was pretty good. She's 24 now. She must be seven years better. Anyhow, you're my only hope now. What? Lorraine Broderick can get away from the police for a while. Oh, yeah. She's smart and clever, and she can go right on doing the same thing she's been doing all along. Stealing, writing bad checks. But that's police business. My part is to find her and give her something one man left her, an insurance bequest. But it's become more than that now, to find her and stop her, maybe. Look, they'll get her eventually, Tappan. Do you know what five years in prison can do to a woman like her? Do you? Well, because I know her and she passed a few bad checks doesn't mean that I'm responsible in any way. You're right, it doesn't. But you're involved just the same. Oh, you're different from just some hotel man who's been tilted. You're a boyfriend... True, just a four-day boyfriend. But a woman like Lorraine Broderick can do a lot of damage in four days' time. Why are you here? 
What do you want? I'm here to disillusion you, Tappan, because I don't think you're disillusioned enough. Now, just You're a perfect stranger to me. I don't know you from a Grand Rapids chair, but I'm doing you a favor talking to you about Lorraine Broderick. I'm doing you a favor telling you she's a crook and a thief and a forger, and everything she ever told you was a lie. Now and then, a woman walks into a man's life that he'd sell his soul for. But all she'll do in return is write you a bad check for it. She's trouble in a great big way, Tappan. You know it as well as I do. Well, what do you want me to do? Apologize for meeting her? I'll be satisfied if you tell me where she is. What? And stop lying. Now, now, now look here. I've listened to all Lorraine I want to Lorraine Broderick to... never went to that bar in Hollywood you were talking about yesterday. You didn't drop her off there. No one there has ever seen her. And she's the kind who could walk around the polo grounds with 50,000 other people and still be seen. Now, where did you take her? Where is she now? Could it, um, could it be fixed so she wouldn't know I told you? I suppose so. She's at the Wentmore downtown, registered under the name of Evelyn Brady. Oh, this, this beats me, Dollar. I just don't understand it. What do you mean? How what you told me is true, I know that. But an hour ago, she called me up here and she said, Joe, I love you. Well, that sounded true, too. And I told her that I loved her. Now I'm turning her in. <laughs> what kind of crazy world do we live in? Expense account item 16, $14. Cab fare from Malibu to downtown Los Angeles in the Wentmore Hotel. A second-rate old-timer on Figueroa Street. A little different from the swank spots where Lorraine Broderick had lived so gaily. The clerk told me she was in 1302. I walked down the hall to Lorraine Broderick's room. The door was standing partially open. All of the lights seemed to be on. Hello? Hello? Hello, anybody? Go back! Huh? Get out of this room! What? Get away! You're out of I'd found Lorraine Broderick at last. Only she was standing on a ledge outside the window, all ready for a leap into eternity. There'll be another intriguing episode of the Broderick matter tomorrow. Tomorrow, the end of the trail. For me... And for Lorraine Broderick. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>